So in the previous video, I looked at the how you would account for if you have a cooling jacket or a heat jacket on your reactor. And for those equations, we were assuming that the fluid in the jacket doesn't change down the length of the reactor. But in, the, in this video, we want to look at the case of where it does change, because then you would need to take into account that change. And in general, if you're if you have a really high flow rate in that jacket, you can assume that the temperature doesn't change. But if you have a low flow rate, or if you know it changes, then this is how you would need to account for it. So this is the coolant temp varies down length of reactor. So just drawing the uh, reactor real quick. And then you have a heat jacket on it, so I'm going to draw that. And then you have, so inside the reactor you have the your flow, some temperature entering, and then you have the flow through this jacket, and this is, the temperature in this would be, well, entering is TA naught. And then you have, so, so you have some volume here. And you have, so just blowing this up out here, whoops. So this is that's the reactor. So then in here you have the reactants, and then in here you have the heat transfer fluid, and you have some Q. So there are two different ways this could occur. You can the because this this fluid in the jacket can either flow in the same direction as the fluid in the reactor, or it can flow the opposite direction. So when it flows in the same direction, that's called co-current flow. And when it flows in the opposite direction, that's called counter-current flow. And you can go and review this stuff in great detail in heat transfer textbook. So right now, this is just gonna be the, uh, the case that, like the general case that would apply to what we're doing here, but so I'm going to look at both cases. So for the first case is co current flow. So this is V and this is delta V plus V. So what we want to do is an energy balance across this volume. So we have, so first of all, rate of energy in minus rate of energy out plus rate of heat added or taken away. And we're going to assume this is steady state for this. So the rate of energy in would be M C H C here at this volume. And this this is so the so this is M C multiplied by the enthalpy here. And then coming out, this is also this is the mass flow rate of the fluid in the jacket. So then this is minus mass flow rate multiplied by the enthalpy and this is coming out so V plus delta V plus and then there's the Q which is the rate of heat added or taken away and that was UA T minus TA multiplied by delta V and this is equal to zero. 
So then I'm going to divide this by delta v and take the limit as delta v approaches zero. And if I do that, I get that the negative, I get minus the mass flow rate d h c d v plus u a t minus t a is equal to zero. And I didn't go through the details on this because by now this is pretty much the same method as every other balance I've been doing and so by now I assume you can you know how to go from here to here. And then we already know that the derivative of enthalpy with respect to volume is C P C D T A D V. So then if we plug that in, we get and so we want to plug this in for that and divide through by that mass flow rate, we get that D T A D V is equal to U A T minus T A over mass flow rate multiplied by heat capacity. And then I'm not going to go through for the case of, for the second case, which would be for the counter current flow. I'm not going to go through this again because it's basically the same thing, only you end up with your signs reversed. So for the countercurrent flow, you would end up with d t a d v is equal to u a t a minus t over mass flow rate multiplied by c p c. So these are the equations you would use if you have, say, a heater cooling jacket and on your reactor and the temperature in that jacket changes down the length of the reactor. So in the next video I'm going to show how you would actually apply these equations I've been deriving in the last few videos to a problem.